And today's topic is about sleep, one of the most difficult parts in my life. And I say this because most people are basically not getting enough optimal sleep. They're either not sleeping enough or getting deep enough sleep or long enough sleep. And I've spoken about this in the past. In fact, there's a video I did called the five best proven tips for falling asleep faster and staying asleep longer. However, an important question I've received is what's better for sleep, magnesium or melatonin? And the answer is neither is better. Basically, they work completely differently. And the truth is I personally use both. However, let me quickly tell you the difference and why both are needed and should be taken because the combination will cause much better and healthier results. All right, first, what's the difference between magnesium and melatonin? Well, magnesium and melatonin have just different functions in the body. Magnesium is a nutrient that regulates many different body processes, while melatonin is a hormone that regulates sleep patterns. Now, the supplement you should take ultimately depends on your goals for sleep. However, again, I take both in addition to some other key ingredients. Magnesium basically helps the body relax, and this nutrient reduces stress and helps you sleep longer. In contrast, melatonin helps you get to sleep faster. Both magnesium and melatonin can be used to treat sleep difficulties. Now, let's first talk about magnesium. And magnesium has many health benefits, and sadly, most of us aren't getting enough of this amazing mineral. In fact, many of us are clearly deficient in magnesium. And as it pertains to sleep specifically, what's clear from the research is that the lack of magnesium negatively impacts sleep. In fact, low levels of magnesium are associated with poor sleep quality and insomnia, as well as anxiety and depression are also correlated with low magnesium levels, and both anxiety and depression can contribute to insomnia. Now, magnesium is associated with over 300 chemical reactions in the body, and as stated earlier, one of them is to help the body relax, both your brain, but mainly the body and the muscles. Granted, not all forms of magnesium do this and can help with sleep, and I'll tell you the, the two best forms and dosages in a minute. Now, let's talk about melatonin. Uh, melatonin, as you may know, is a hormone, and it's naturally produced by the body that regulates sleep-wake cycle. Now, when working correctly, it increases at nighttime and then decreases in the morning. Unfortunately, many things can interfere with melatonin production, such as not getting enough sunlight during the day. That's right, it negatively affects it at night. Also, excessive light in the evening, such as, you know, from your computer screens, phones, and TVs, and so forth. Also, going to bed too late. Yes, ideally, you'd sleep, you know, before midnight and preferably around 10 p.m., um, also, not sticking to the same sleep schedule every day or every night. And this is because melatonin and cortisol will work in different patterns if you miss that sleep window. Also, high stress and cortisol levels is a big problem, both physical or emotional stress. Also, jet lag and shift work negatively affect melatonin. Additionally, as we age, the body produces less melatonin. So, this is a big problem. Unfortunately, many people who do use melatonin use the wrong form and dose. Now, circling back to magnesium and what's the best form and dose, one big problem is that there are many different forms of magnesium, such as citrate or oxide, chloride, lactate, malate, sulfate, orotate, um, l threonate and glycinate. Again, each has its specific goal and role in the human body, but as it pertains to improving sleep, and more so relaxing the body, the best, I believe, is glycinate. Now, it's glycinate with a G because it is easily absorbed and has a calming effect and can help reduce feelings of anxiety, depression, stress, and insomnia. Now, some say that the therionate version is also good for sleep, even though it has been shown to have more benefits for brain health and cognitive function. Now, I personally use glycinate version if you want, you can test either of them or, in fact, mix both. And the ideal dose is about 400 milligrams to start and take it about 30 to maybe 60 minutes before bed. Now, as far as melatonin, the problem with regular melatonin, the ones that most of us buy, including myself in the old days, is that it's fast acting and can wear off in the middle of the night and then all of a sudden you wake up or you have a hard time falling back to sleep. So some people then decide to take a much higher dose to compensate for this, and then they end up waking up groggy in the morning. They're just dragging throughout the day, and then they increase their coffee, and then all these other problems. 
Now, I use one that's both fast and slow releasing, so it's a bit time release. So it's out of your system in about six to seven hours. So there's less need of it, a lower dose, but yet it has a more positive effect. And I take anywhere between one to three milligram at night with other herbs, amino acids, and yes, my 400 milligram of magnesium glycine. I take them all at once around 30 minutes before bed. Now, as stated, I do take additional, you know, um, vitamins and, and amino acids and so forth because sleep is so important. So below this video, I've listed the best forms and the ingredients to help me fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. Um, so take a look at the description area, give them a try and let me know how it works for you and if it's improved your sleep quality. As well in the comment section, let me know what you do or take to help improve your sleep.